Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Our text for our meditation this morning is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 through chapter 4, verse 2. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, For this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So far, a text. Dear Christian friends, I want you to imagine that you are on your favorite beach. You've earned a vacation, a hard-earned vacation. And you lay down in the warm sand, you put your hands behind your head, and you can just hear the seagulls, you can feel the water lap against your toes, you can hear the crashing of the waves, And before you know it, the warmth of the sun envelops you and you are asleep. You wake up and you feel rested and yet very quickly you realize that three hours in the sun has left you lobster red crisp from head to toe. And you try to stand up and there is ache everywhere because you're burned. But you do reflect the glory of the sun. Not in the way you want to, and yet there's a definite reflection as people look at you, cover their face, and point. That's one kind of reflection, my friends. Today we're going to talk about what it's like to gaze at God's glory. Moses' glory was veiled and fading. Jesus unveils God's glory. In 2 Corinthians, Paul is being questioned. People wondered, why should we go to Jesus? Why should we worry about your ministry? We have a perfectly good Jewish faith. The Old Testament laws that Moses laid out were wonderful. Paul, why should we listen to you? This is what Moses is up against. And so what Moses does is he takes them back to the Old Testament. And he gives them the example of when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. Moses was in God's presence, and his face wasn't burnt, but it did glow. It reflected God's glory. So he came back down, and people looked at him, and Moses shared God's law with them, and they saw his face, that reflection of God's glory, and it was very powerful. And yet Moses put a veil over his face. And that might seem curious, except that Paul explains why here in verse 13. Moses would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. You see, Moses did not want the people to see God's glory fade because he was afraid, and rightly so, that they would see the glory of God's law fade. You see, God's law is very good for us. If we follow God's will for our life, things will go better for us. It will. If you try it your way, you're going to find out that there might be some more fun, and yet it's not really worth it, is it? Because fun is doing what your God commands. It will be easier. God's plan for marriage. God's plan for your life. Try your best with all of your God-given abilities. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not cheat. All of these things are good. 
when people try to go against them, it can ruin relationships. And more importantly, it can ruin your relationship with your God. Well, the Jews looked at what Paul was trying to tell them, and they said, why do we need Jesus? We have a perfectly good law of our own. We have a way that we've worshipped God for a thousand years, two thousand years. What do you have, Paul, that is so wonderful? Why should we change? He talks about this in the next verse. Their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed. They did not see the purpose of God's law. Yeah, they understood that that's how they would worship God, But the problem, my friends, is that if you try to make God happy through God's law, you will fail. I said it's important for you to keep God's law and to follow His will for your life. It will be easier for you. And yet that, as a guide for a Christian, is very good. Make no mistake, though, that does not replace Jesus. Do you think that you could make God happy by the life that you live. Do you think God looks at you and if you're having a good day of following His commands, does He love you more? If you're having a bad day, does He love you less? See, this is the confusion that can come when we focus on God's law too much. If we make how we make God happy, if that focus is from God's law, we'll fail. Can you ever keep God's law good enough for God? He says in the book of James, if a man keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point, you're guilty of breaking all of it. That's very difficult for anyone. And yet we lie to ourselves. We think that we can keep God's law pretty well, but it's never going to be good enough. He says in verse 15, Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. They did not understand it. Because when Paul says, you need Jesus, they said, why? Why do I need Jesus? What for? I'm good enough. I've kept all God's laws. Look at how Moses laid these out so perfectly. And we can do the same. Be careful, my fellow Christians, because this can sneak into our lives. We love Jesus, everything about Him, and yet... That lie that Satan says, you don't need Jesus, you're good enough on your own. Sin, well, you've made mistakes, but sin, really? That's awfully strong. Well, it is very strong. And yet our sins are horrible. We compare them to the the perfection that God offers. Don't compare yourself to the guy down in Alabama who was killed by our government, who killed a bus driver and took a child hostage It's easy to find someone worse than you. But God says, compare yourself to me. And we have to shrink back in shame knowing that we cannot live up to God. Well, God wants us to look at the law. It serves a very good purpose. You might think that there's something wrong with God's law, but there's not. You see, the point is, God's law in the Old Testament pointed these Jews ahead to the cross, to Jesus. It does the same thing for us, but it points us back. You see, if I say gaze at God's glory, it can be veiled if you just use God's commands. But Jesus unveils God's glory completely. Listen to verse 14, the second half. Because only in Christ is it, that is veil, the veil, taken away. How does that happen with Christ? Look at the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Look at how God told the people how He wanted them to live. It was good. They needed those laws to keep them separate from the nations around them. They were wicked and evil. And all of these laws, the ceremonial laws, how they had to eat kosher, The Sabbath laws, all of those kept them separate from the evil nations around them. And yet even these laws, the people ignored after a while, and they just worked right into those other cultures, those other faiths, and they fell away from their God. And yet with the New Covenant, it focuses on Jesus. 
Think of it. The old way says be perfect. And yet in Jesus, God says He was perfect for you. The old way says do this, don't do this. But Jesus says, I've done it all for you. The old way? We have to work harder. My friends, you need to get your nose to the grindstone. But of course, it'll be never be good enough. The new way? Jesus says, I've won. There's nothing more for you to work at to make God happy. He loves you because of me. And because I've won, you win. You win right now. Your sins are forgiven. Your guilt is taken away. And one day, you're going to wear a crown on your head as you stand next to me in heaven. Yes, this is how we have real freedom. You see, in the old way, the focus was on you. You had to try harder. The new way, the focus is on Jesus. What does Paul write? He says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. That's where that freedom lies. The focus on, is on Jesus. It's not on you. How liberating is it for you to think that you don't need to try harder to make God happy? The pressure's off. God loves you right now. No matter what your past is, no matter what you dragged into church this morning that was heavy on your heart, leave it at the confession of sins. When you hear the absolution, hear those words that you are forgiven because the Spirit goes into your hearts and He convinces you to believe it. So now, where does that leave us? That leaves us with Jesus unveiling God's glory. Listen to verse 18. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. There's two things you have to know about this glory. Number one, the glory does not fade. When Moses came down from the mountain, that very glory that he reflected to the people off of his face, that was real. But it was fading. Because God's law was fading also. But that's not what we have. Our glory never fades. And the second part is, we don't need a veil. Listen again. We are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Think of it. You just ooze glory out of your pores. Do you realize that? You are being transformed. What is it that you don't like about yourself? You can leave that behind. You don't need to sin any longer. It holds no grip on you. You are free. God's Spirit works with you. He says, change. Take those bad habits. Dump them. We're about to enter into the season of Lent, my friends. It is traditional for you to give up something for Lent. Now this is Transfiguration Sunday when you are bathed in God's glory. Now is a great time to think about what it is that you want to leave behind. We'll talk about that more next week and in the weeks to come. But you can be transformed. You can change. Jesus is the biggest agent for change the world has ever seen. And He's your Savior. Paul goes on, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret in shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I want to go back to that beach. To the poor gentleman or lady who was burnt to a crisp, who reflected the sun's glory and yet was a little uncomfortable and embarrassed, frankly, with how he looked. You also reflect the sun's glory and yet don't think of it as this lobster sunburn that you need to be embarrassed of. You reflect the Son of God's glory. When people look at you, don't think of yourself as having this embarrassing suntan. Think of yourself having this glow, this natural aura, a charisma, like you walked out of a spa. People look at you and they say, wow, he looks good, she looks great. What is it about that person? Because it's this glow that oozes from your soul. 
that is free and forgiven. Share with people around you what you know. Invite them to Lent. You ever wonder why we don't have Lent for kids? I know it's depressing to think about Jesus' suffering and death, and yet that is a perfect time for you to invite friends to come and see the real God, to see just how great His love was, to go through that passion account and to see how Jesus was beaten down for you. If you have a friend, consider inviting them to church when Lent starts at any time in there. It's never too late, of course, and yet this is a great time. Dear friends, we've seen Jesus' glory in the Gospel lesson today. How He was changed and transfigured. That sight is very important because we're going to see Him beaten down. And some people might turn away because that's not the God that we signed up for, is it? And yet that's the God that we need. It's not fun to see our God who's not glorious. And yet in that suffering, there is very real glory. And that's what you could offer people. That's where your freedom and the glory comes from. Yes, gaze at God's glory. Because in Jesus, that's how it's truly unveiled. Share it with someone this week. Invite them to church. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. Tell them to come. Tell them, yeah, I put ashes on my forehead. Not because it's fun, but because it reminds me of what I am before my God. And it reminds me of what Jesus lifts me out of. That's how I can be free. And that's how you can reflect God's glory too. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.